Hi, I'm James from Speechy. Speechy are a team of scriptwriters who work on TV and radio shows such as Dead Ringers, Horrible Histories, Have I Got News For You, so many shows like that. And today I'm here to help all you grooms out there write the perfect wedding speech. Step one, gather your intel. Um, this is the only time you get to be a detective. Sadly, you're becoming a detective for your own life, not someone else's. Still fun to be a detective. This moment, you want to retrace your relationship history. Kind of uh, find all the love lessons you've written. Go on social media, look at all the things that you've written to each other in the past. Write down all the stories that you find from there. And when we work with clients, we get them to fill in a questionnaire that helps prompt these memories. When did you know they were the one? What did you really love about them when you first met them? All those things, but we also try to find the quirkier things, like um, what's weird about her? What's she obsessed by? What's her superpower? Whether it's being able to find the perfect film on Netflix in a few seconds, as opposed to scrolling for 20 minutes or whatever, things like that, things that really make her her and your relationship you, because you can include stories about your trip to Rome or whatever, but really we want to find out what is in the intricacies of the relationship and that makes the speech more interesting. Tip two, know your etiquette. So unless your bride is also giving a speech, you're gonna be lumbered with all the to-do things. All the etiquette where you need to thank everyone for joining. You could fall into a trap here. You need to thank a lot of people. You need to thank your parents for being there. Of course, your bride's parents, the groom's party, the bride's party, but you don't want to uh, thank every single person who's been there. So for example, you don't need to thank the caterers. You don't need to thank uh, the vicar even. Thank them individually, because that's just polite but you don't have to thank them uh, in the speech as well. While the thank yous are important and the least exciting part of the speech, you don't need to name check every single person for being there. Thank them for coming, but don't name check half the guests. You've given them free wine, so they should be delighted anyway. Before you start your speech, plot it out. You've got this great theme now, so kind of loosely tick off and write down all the little bits uh, which you think will fit into the story, all the little paragraphs and the headings you're gonna have. Uh, now a common mistake is putting the thank yous at the start of the speech. We want you to open with something more interesting, really hook the audience in from the beginning. If you start thanking everyone at the top, you know, it just gets a little bit boring, to be honest. And But of course you need to thank people, so keep that towards the bottom after you've established your stories and added some humour. Then you can do the thank yous before ending, of course, this is very important, with a very sentimental, heartfelt bit about your bride and saying why you love her so much. If you're planning on giving a toast to the dearly departed, again, don't do that at the start. I mean, obviously it's incredibly difficult and it's a very uh, important thing to mention in the speech, but you probably want to put it in with the thank yous as well, just so the speech doesn't start off, you know, on a very sad note and uh, you can have a more thoughtful moment towards the end. This is probably the most important tip. This is the secret to putting your speech into the Premier League of speeches. Find your narrative. It's time to bring all those random anecdotes you've got, you've written them all down, uh, and it's now time to put them under one banner. So you wanna find a common theme that's really you, and you and your bride, of course. So for example, if you're a teacher, or you're both teachers, why not look at the lessons that you've taught each other along the way? Or if your bride is really into romantic fiction, uh, why not write the new Romeo and Juliet for her, but like a five minute version, as opposed to being set in Verona, you set it in Newquay, or something like that, if you met in Newquay. If you didn't, don't include Newquay. Get this bit right and everything else should really be easy. Tip five, finding your funny. The good news is the pressure is on the best man to be funny. Uh, not so much you, the groom, and this gives you a great opportunity to gazump them and be funnier than them. And who doesn't want to do that? You don't need to rely on uh, corny jokes or ones you've heard before at weddings or ones that you found on the internet. Really, please put them in the bin. The best way to be funny is to keep it simple and just remember what's true. And, you know, put things in that really nail your relationship or really find a characteristic of the bride that everyone recognises and they'll laugh through familiarity. It's such an easy way of doing it. So look at your relationship, find those comedy nuggets. Is it um, that she's strangely obsessed by cushions? She has to have a G&T with everything. Uh, she's one of the only people in the world who understands pensions. If she is, brilliant. Put those things in there, the speech will really start to come to life. Okay, you've got the speech there. Now it's time to start cutting things away from the speech. First of all, cut the cliches. By cliches, I mean things like soulmate, the one I love, the one, all those kind of things. Uh, I mean, it's good to have a few of them in there, but don't overdo it with them. Instead, prove, don't tell. So instead of saying, I love you, say, I love you because of X. I knew I loved you the day I would split my Nando's with you, or I knew I loved you the moment you slept in the same tent as me on the third night at Glastonbury, even though it stank. Um, and that was when I knew we were meant to be together. One cliche that is totally encouraged is saying your bride looks absolutely beautiful on the day. If you don't say that, you're in big trouble and the wedding could be over before it even begun. So be careful with that and include it. 
You're in the chopping mood now, let's get chopping some more. The good news is that first drafts are always bad. Don't worry about that. Read over it again, and it's probably gonna be too long. Uh, some bits won't work, but it's easy here. Be brutal with it. You don't wanna hit anything more than 1,300 words or anything, because even with laughs and the odd heckle, which hopefully won't happen too much, you're still gonna be hitting about 10 minutes. So make it punchy, cut out the waffle. If an anecdote's hard to explain, get rid of it. If you've got two anecdotes that kind of do the same job, just stick to the better one. Be brutal and your guests will thank you for it. You've got your speech, you've cut everything down, it's great. Now you need to prepare to deliver it for the big day. And this is really important. Some people try to wing their wedding speech. Your speech doesn't deserve that, it's too good for that. Rehearse as much as possible. It's fine to have notes on the day. Don't feel you need to learn it off book, but try to learn the speech as though you won't have it on the day. And if you do plan on doing it um, without having the speech in front of you, have a copy in your pocket or something, just in case. Read out your speech five times in a row when you're trying to practice it. That's a good way of getting it stuck in your brain before you go to sleep. And in the morning, it should be there in your brain a little bit better. Apparently that works, it's science. Write it out by hand to help make it stick in your brain and read it to your family and friends if you like. Not all of them, because you want it to be a surprise and you'll be laughing by the day. It's the big day. You've written the speech, you've edited it, rehearsed it, you've done all the hard work. Now you've got to go up and read the speech in front of your family and friends. It's going to be great, the speech is brilliant, you know that. However, of course you're going to be a bit nervous on the day, so take it slowly, because at the beginning, you're going to stumble more, naturally. Once people start laughing, you'll ease into it and everything will be fine. Breathe throughout, don't not breathe. Take a glass of water up with you, because that can be a good way of you know, breaking things up if you start to worry a little bit. Um, smile throughout. Don't read it off your phone, don't do that, and write it down or have it on a piece of paper. And don't just stare at it the whole way through, look at the audience, communicate with them, and finally, enjoy it. It's a great speech, you're gonna do a great job. Everyone there is supporting you and loving you. If you're looking for any extra hand-holding along the way throughout any of this, just check out the speechy site and we can help you, okay? I've been James, hope you enjoyed this and they were helpful, thanks.